Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so in the beginning I was willing not to show any of, of Max Pachi, just to talk about music and stuff. And yesterday I've been told, no, 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 you have to, to show some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I prepared like a few things this morning, but uh, basically what I want to, to talk is not that much Max Pachi, or specific Max Pachi, or my use of Max, because I was, oh, I'm no specialist of Max. I use it since years, and it's like my main tool, but compared to probably many of you and Many of us will talk later. I mean, um, I use it at a very basic level, and I mean, what? I'm at ease with it, but I, I'm not like special guru. And <coughs> so, what, what I wanted to talk about and want to talk about and show you a few examples uh, is mostly my use of noise, uh, and not in sense noise music, but noise as well, that's nice. Uh, which I guess comes back from uh, uh, the fact of me first being like a um, classical composer, meaning using acoustic instruments, which are everything but pure. Uh, like probably, I don't know, but every time I ask, I mean, there is nothing like a sine wave in the real world. I mean, sine wave probably is the purest. Uh, waveform of, of all and doesn't exist and if uh, if I write for cello or, or violin or whatever I mean you, you <laughs> have this idea of purity of this nice pure tone and this those, this string vibrating and actually it's not it's always like in motion and, and stopping I mean the bow just grabs the strings pulls it releases it and again and again so the string is moving not moving moving but moving in always like kind of different way, and of course, um, I mean it, it's the same for any instrument. Just easier to explain with the bow, um, and of course um, there is not one reason, one force, one um, cause for producing the sound. I mean on an instrument. I mean like if you play a little bit of cello or wh whatever. I mean of course it's very easy to to suppose that your left hand does the note and your right hand with the bow uh, produces the sound, actually give, gives a force. Actually it's totally wrong. I mean if you play a little bit of cello, I mean even if you are like uh, Rostopovich or whoever, I mean of course you play basically very much in tune, <coughs> but not perfectly in tune. And you tune, you correct your tuning with the pressure of the bow and also the bow is not the only one thing responsible for um, uh, for the texture of the sound. It's also the way you press you with the left hand. And of course, if you use like, uh, I don't know, electric guitar, uh, every electric guitar player is kind of usually fascinated with feedback, which is something you know how to do it, and you cannot explain how to do it. And same goes for like wind instruments. I mean, I remember working with a um, very good sax player and speaking about uh, circular breathing and he said that at some point he doesn't know if he does it or not I mean it just comes second nature and very organic thing and basically uh, my life with the computer uh, computer as instrument maximum speed in that case because it's very much maximum speed I always try to, to learn different languages and I, never <coughs> I mean, <coughs> when I try to learn, I don't know, reactor or, s or super collider, oh, I felt like very miserable and realized. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's very interesting, it's good. And, uh, and I, I'm the first one to say, oh, super collider has wonderful sound and reactor is so powerful. But just to patch like minimal uh, object, patch, whatever, took me like another few hours. I said, oh, with Max, it would have been done. So I, I, I pretty much use Max MSP since a long time. And so back to the noise, I wanted to, s I mean, like one of my most <coughs> recent piece, which kind of um, is my state of my relation with the <coughs> noise in music today, is that piece called Data Noise. Uh, Which is uh, I think it's small. 
uh, which is the result of me working with the noise, meaning working first with noise as a... Uh, I will make a few examples, I'll show you a few examples later, but just to present it quickly, because I will have to make another network close my network. So I want to get rid of the internet first. Um, which is using the noise as very much the only, or almost the only input in my music. I never use samples. I hate the idea of using sam samples or sound files, even if, if I use them sometimes, because well, shit happens. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, like, for instance, once I, I did a patch which was very unstable. It was great, but it was crashing all the time, so I just recorded the sounds. Uh, and I use those because I don't know, for some reason, the patch is not working. Uh, but most of the time I try to avoid it, I try to create everything from scratch and scratch in this case is very much using noise uh, as the sole input. I, I did pieces which had only one noise generator as a, as a only, only input for a piece uh, whose duration was 77 minutes, so it's quite a long time. It was not only... Um, so this piece, data noise, uh, is very much like as I said, my state of my relation with, with noise today, it's, uh, I'll go back in more details, different aspects, but it's a piece which is designed for two musicians, one of them being a dancer, <coughs> and that's important also. Uh, I, it's only electronic piece, I mean, there is no instrument, no bass, no whatever, no traditional instruments. Uh, it's all uh, generation, I mean, based on noise. Uh, um, it's, there is also video playing on, uh, which is also generative video and based on the very same. I'm not good at video at all. I just use what I can use in Max MSP to generate video. And also, the, same, the very same patch uh, also controls the lights on the stage, some of them being chaotic lights, I mean, chaotic process to kind of chaotic process, uh, processes to, to, to control the lights. And the dancer, uh, and the dancer is important because um, the first thing I said is that I use the noise, as in audio noise, of different colors, I will show it later, uh, as the only input, but also after a while, I, and now this is why I was speaking about this cello example or, or, or guitar feedback and stuff, uh, very much the attitude, the, uh, the body of the musician is also which creates the personality of the music very often. Uh, meaning, as I said, you correct your intonation or any given instrument by yeah, your embouchure, your, uh, the way you finger. Uh, I mean, you, you have some piano players who have a very light touch, some very hard, and they choose the string according. And of course, I, I was talking about how the body position makes actually your tuning be in tune or not. On the cello, same thing for, for a violin. Uh, I don't play piano, so I don't have any answer about piano. I mean, why all piano players make a vibrato, I still don't know, but that's another story maybe. Um, but I wanted to use like the human body, not as, I mean, she's a dancer, uh, but it's not the dance part which interests me. It's this um, fact that as trained as you are, I mean, a computer is kind of perfect machine. Uh, when I set up some parameter at that or that or that value, it stays on that. And I can recall it every time and it's, it will be the exact same thing. When I ask um, a musician to be in tune, uh, he will never be in tune exactly. And this is why in symphonic orchestra we have a that many violins because they don't play in tune, and this creates this huge sound which I, which we like. It, it's not just I take the same thing and multiply it twenty times. And when you ask even very well trained dancer um, to make a movement or to stay still, for that matter, he she will never be still, and the position will never be the same. And this is what I call data noise. In this case, uh, it's taking all information from the dancing, in the case, for the human body, or just to 
uh, distort the, ver the two exact, two perfect informations that I give to the computer to synthesize the sound. Uh, <coughs> so this is like, if you are interested uh, in Speaking of all patches and stuff, you <coughs> on my website I always put all kind. I mean, very often, not always, but very often put uh, the patches and stuff. Uh, so, so here you can don't. D yeah, I was speaking about uh, the work with chaotic lights, <coughs> just like this flickering of, of things. Um, so yeah, on also also uh, on my website for a different project, you have the patches which you can download, and please do. If probably when you open, there will be some object missing, which are mostly my own um, abstraction. But just, I mean, my uh, email is also here. Just send me email. I will send you the subject. Uh, so yeah, and so, so this piece is like the main one. I'll come back on talking about it and showing a few examples, a few patches later on. But also, also uh, examples, also pieces I will be willing to speak about is this convergence solution, which is for electric harp and live electronics, which also uses the human body, but not of the dancer, of the harp player herself, um, and how the and how the musician. I ask sometimes the musician to play against him herself. Um, so yeah, so this is like a quick presentation of what I want to talk about. <coughs> and now, just to explain, I will. Yeah, so basically in this in this piece, uh, Data Noise, what I wanted is, as I say, the movement of the performer to interact with my patch and to make it more, less stable, very unstable, actually. Uh, for me, it came when you're, uh, actually, the first idea, was when you are on tour, you know, uh, very often you end up staying at friends' place, and they say, oh, you know, I will just give you the key, you can come back any time, the key is from, you feel at home. And they give you the key, you know, there's a little trick on opening the door, you just push, pull it, and it works. And they do it every day. And kind of the, and you cannot open it for hours, you stay in front of the door, <laughs> so I probably it's the wrong key or something. And it's, for me, it's this example when uh, the, I would say the machine, or the patch, or whatever, kind of reacts differently every time. And get used to you and get and and not to somebody else. And for for this project, uh, data noise, my idea was to um, so I had this patch which could be in a way similar to I will choose a patch <coughs> similar to I would call uh, modular synthesizer. I mean. The way I write is, how do you make it smaller? Or oh, the resolution of the screen bigger? Of this screen? Uh, uh, yeah, it's now. I can also just zoom the max here. Yeah, so like this. <coughs> Is it yeah. any better? Yeah. Uh, 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 confirm. Uh. Yeah, it looks better. So here's the way I, I write patches <coughs> if they want to show up. Don't. Is the 
display ah. mirroring. Yeah, that's that's the way I'll do it. Maybe it usually changes everything on your. Uh, but well. Yeah, kind of. So yeah, the, the way I usually uh, do my patches is, is very much like this. I mean, a lot of B patcher, B, B, B patchers, and each of them is like a, well, kind of module of of um, of modular synth. And uh, I will go more in, in, in detail, but uh, the idea in this patch is that here on the this small part here actually receives all the data coming from the dancer in, in, in that I mean for that project I used a lot of Wii mods uh, she got four Wii mods she got a ring with accelerometers uh, meaning uh, the, th the three, uh, three di uh, directions and uh, under the table she used to dance on or get on, she had like a, um, a tactile flow.